Snow cone mini one shot. I don't really like beaches. I prefer mountains. There's a lot of things Izuku had seen in his life. Ochako being in a swimsuit was one thing he hadn't planned on seeing but he definitely didn't mind it, aside from his face turning. Since the school year was nearly over, the students of each class got to go on their own mini vacation for a day. Two people suggested a nude beach, and that's why Mineta and Kaminari have to stay with Iida at all times. But everyone else thought that a regular beach sounded good so they voted go once they arrived everyone got changed and that's where we are now. Izuku stepped out of the changing station and the first thing he saw was his fellow classmate Ochako talking to Asui only about four yards away. but he couldn't help but notice her pink bikini. He never thought that she would wear one. He expected her to be wearing something less revealing, but part of him was glad she didn't. He didn't want to be labeled as a perv so he quickly looked away to talk to Hida. Ochako herself had at that moment peeked over at Izuku and she wanted to do nothing more than to pounce on him. She knew that he had muscle, but damn was he ripped. His abs were so ripped you could grate cheese on them. Of course she had other ideas as well but she also took notice of his legs and arm muscles. A guy who had such a plain face shouldn't have that kind of body. She didn't want to be labeled as a creep so she turned back around to continue her conversation with Asui. Come on everyone, let's go. Hiroshima yelled out holding a volleyball and everyone raced to the beach leaving only Ochako and Izuku behind together. H hi. Izuku stuttered on his words. H hey D Deku. Are you excited? She asked trying to cool herself down. Why yeah. I haven't been to a beach in a while. Dot not since. Um. Dot the beach back in the city. Izuku said. They were at a different beach from the one Izuku cleaned up. I like to go to the beach. Other than the traveling it was free so it was one of the few things my family was able to do anyway we should probably catch up everyone, Ochako suggested. Catch up e everyone, Ochako suggested. Good idea. They both walked together and went down to the beach where some of their classmates were already in the water and some were lying down in the sand. Everyone remember to follow all the safety rules. Remember this is still a public area. Iida shouted at everyone. Hey Iida, can you come here please? Kaminari asked with Mineta and Iida complied. What can I help you with? Iida asked not knowing what they were plotting. We wanted to bury someone in the sand as a tradition, you know. We thought you would be perfect. Do you mind? Mineta asked holding in his laugh. I would be honored to be in this tradition. Iida agreed to help. Mineta and Kirishima dug a big hole and then had Iida sit in it. They proceeded to put the sand back in the hole burying him all the way to his head. The sand seems a bit close to my neck. I can barely move it could you guys get me out now? Iida asked of them. Sorry Iida, but no way are we staying with you when all the girls are in swimsuits. Mineta smiled at the thought of its story continues below. This makes up for the last time when we got disappointed. Kaminari recalled that time he was disappointed with the girls' uniforms. H. Hey, you can't do that. I'm going to call for help. Iida was about to yell but before he could the two pervs put a bucket over his head. Perfect. Don't worry Iida we will come back for you later. With that Kaminari and me and ran off to go look at the girls. 
Kaminari later got a poke in both eyes and Mianta got stung by a jellyfish when he went in the water with goggles and had to go to the infirmary. Ochako took out her blanket and laid it down across the sand and then proceeded to lie down on it. After a few minutes Izuku came walking over to her. Hey Uraraka, is it okay if I sit here? Izuku asked. Of course. Go ahead. She gave him her permission and he sat down on the sand beside her. Man it's pretty hot out. Oh that reminds me. I need to put on some sunscreen. Ochako searched all around in her bag and pulled out some spray on sunscreen. Oh I completely forgot to bring some. Izuku scratched the back of his neck. Here you can borrow mine. She handed the bottle to him when she was done. Thank you. He took the bottle and sprayed his arms, legs, face, and chest and stomach. Do you need me to get your back? She offered. Yes please. He handed the bottle back to her. She stood up from the ground and she sprayed all around his backside getting the back of his arms, back, legs, and everything. I can do you as well if you want. He gave her the same offer. Go ahead please. She turned around so Izuku could put the spray on her. When he squeezed the bottle however nothing came out. He gave it a good shaking but that didn't make it work. I think it's all out. Izuku yeeted it into a nearby garbage can. I can help. Mina said coming out of nowhere with a new bottle of sunscreen. How? Ochako asked begging to God that she didn't have an alternate motive. You guys can use my bottle. Here ya go. She tossed it to Izuku and he caught it in his hands and Mina went on her way. Just then Izuku realized there was something about this bottle. It wasn't spray on it was a squeeze one meaning B was going to have to rub it on Ochako's back and legs and arms. He was going to touch a girl's body. And on purpose this time. Ochako had also realized what was going on and her face already looked sunburned. I is this all right? He asked wanting her permission. W well I guess it's better than getting a sunburn. So. L let's do it. Ochako agreed. She lied back down on her stomach lying down on her blanket as Izuku applied the white cream on her back. Oh god what I have wrote. Izuku wanted to bury himself in the sand from how embarrassed he was and he had to restrain himself from looking at her ass, which was very hard. Ochako had to admit that despite the scars on his hands, they felt pretty nice on her back. Once Izuku finished her back he went ahead and did her arms and legs which was a lot less embarrassing to him. Story continues below. Thank you Deku. Quote dot. She thanked her crush for the help. A anytime. He hoped he would get another chance to do this someday. Once that was done, Hiroshima, Bakugo, Mina, Tadorkoi, Juro, and Siro were setting up a net when Ochako and Izuku came along. What are you guys doing? Izuku asked curious about what they were doing. We're about to play volleyball. You two want to join. It's going to pretty manly. Hiroshima pumped his two fists together. That sounds like fun. Ochako said excited. I'll join too. Izuku also agreed to join. The teams were as followed. One one side up front was the pair of Izuku who was wearing All Might swimming trunks and beside him was Ochako who was really glad to be with Izuku. Hiroshima who was wearing Crocs even in the sand took the middle. And in the back was Tadorkoi. On the other side Mina stood alone up front so she could be near her dream pairing. In the back was a pair with Jiro who wasn't really paying attention alongside Siro who thought about using his quirk until the rules said no quirks. And Bakugo apparently going wherever the hell he wants to Izuku's team took the ball first. Tadorkoi hot the ball from the back over the net sending it straight to Bakugo who immediately hit the ball sending it back over the net. The ball came to Ochako. 
She got the ball upwards towards Izuku and he spiked it over the net. Mina just barely managed to keep the ball in the air sending it back to Siro. He hit the ball towards Juro. She gave it a light punch to Bakugo and he sent it flying right into Kirishima. He hit the ball back upwards to Todorkoi who set Kirishima up with the ball and Kirishima hit the ball back to the other side. The ball was heading towards Juro. Naturally she didn't want to get hit so she stepped out of the way letting the ball hit the sand inbound scoring one for Izuku's team. What the hell was that? Bakugo yelled at his teammate while Izuku's team celebrated. I didn't want to get hit so I moved out of the way. Duh. Juro rolled her eyes at him as she spoke and the game continued with the final score 21 to 17 Izuku team. Way to go Deku. Ochako cheered at her best friend as he had the last shot that won the game. All this excitement made them forget they were wearing much less clothing and they felt skin on skin when they got a quick hug. They both wanted to not let go and to also be buried in the sand from the embarrassment. S sorry. They both let go and quickly apologized to one another. Hey you two. We are about to start up the grill. Hurry up. Momo called at the two as they were the last ones still on the beach. They went up the hill to where the bus was with all the students as well as Aizawa and Midnight. If Mineta hadn't gotten stung by the jellyfish he would still die from seeing Midnight in her swimsuit. Alright everyone grab a plate and dig in. Midnight and Aizawa had grilled all the food or had bought some of the food. There was chips, soda, hot dogs, burgers, and other kinds of things you would expect to be at a beach. This is really good Midnight and Aizawa Sensei. Mina complimented them on the food they had prepared. Aizawa here did most of the work. He is surprisingly really good. Midnight commented on his skills. Yeah well once I'm done eating I'm going to sleep on the bus so don't bother me. He rubbed his tired eyes. Once everyone finished eating they all went back to the beach to continue having fun. Soon the fun came to an end and it was time for the class to go back to home. Everyone got on the bus with all their belongings and sat down in their respective seats, apart from Mineta as he would be staying for the night. Ochako took her seat sitting right beside Izuku. Hey Deku did you have fun today? Ochako asked him. I sure did. Did you have fun as well? He asked her as well. I always have fun with you Deku. She gave him a smile that would warm any weeb's heart. Same to you Uraraka. They flirted without realizing that they were flirting. And once everyone was on the bus they went off. But unfortunately, Iida was snoring away underneath the bucket. I would apologize for the long wait if it wasn't about to happen again. 